After the planet is frozen, a train circles around the world for years to preserve the lives of its passengers. Their compact world is threatened due to unrest amongst the lower class and a mysterious murder. After all the ice melted and several species became extinct, scientists tried to cool the Earth to reverse the damage. However, this caused the planet to freeze down to its core. The CEO of Wilford Industries predicted this, so he built a great arc train. As the world freezes, the rich retreat into the train known as Snowpiercer. Desperate to survive, the remaining population rushed to invade the train, fighting against the armed soldiers known as Jackboots. During this, many people get killed and families are separated. After the train departs, the Jackboots confront the stowaways, so one woman hides her child, Miles. The mother, however, gets thrown off the train. Andre Layton and a few survivors fight off the Jackboots, so the guards shut the doors, trapping them at the train's tail. The Snowpiercer begins traveling around the world with its 1001 cars. To prevent them from freezing, the train must never stop. Over six years later, the head of hospitality, Melanie Cavill, greets the passengers while everyone on board begins their day. At the tail, the jackboots herd away the stowaways, nicknamed tailies. The train's police officers, called brakemen, delivered one cart of rations, pissing off the tailies as they're already starving with the usual rations of two carts. During this, Leighton checks his watch, seeing that the jackboots and brakemen leave precisely 45 seconds after arriving. The tailies begin dividing up the rations, with everyone pitching in to feed their largest fighter, Strongboy. Leighton then asks Miles about his studies, encouraging him to become an apprentice and an engineer to move up the train. Soon, the leaders plot to hijack the other cars to ensure their survival. Leighton reports that the Jackboots have been leaving the gates open for nearly a minute, so Pike thinks Strongboy can handle it. However, Leighton argues that they don't know enough about the train. Still, Josie points out that they must do something because their rations are decreasing, and their women have been sterilized, as the others are driving them to extinction. Leighton reminds them of the Year 3 Rebellion, where they fought without knowing the train's layout and with no connection from the outside. 62 of them died, and 13 lost an arm. Still, Pike asserts that they must rebel before the others toss them out and find their weapons. Throughout the day, the tallies prepare their weapons and prayers for the fight. Ivan gives Leighton a shiv, reminding him that the Snowpiercer is a fortress to class, so resistance is perpetual. Meanwhile, near the front of the train, Melanie attends to the wealthy passengers. Lila and Robert Falger complain about Scandinavian royalties being inappropriate in their sauna, so Melanie suggests arranging a schedule for the two parties to enjoy their sauna separately. The Falger daughter, LJ, then declares that she wants to go to third class, but another man warns her that there's violence there. When the others get concerned, Melanie assures them that the brakemen are just responding to something. Away from the passengers, Melanie then orders the concierge, Ruth Wardell, to check. Soon, Jack Boots arrive at the tail and Ruth is with them, so the tailies hesitate in starting their plan. She calls on Leighton, so he quietly tells his people to hold. When the Jack Boots take him, the rest start fighting back, but Leighton is still taken away. After undergoing medical examinations and getting handcuffed, Leighton is taken to the third class mess hall, where he sees sunlight for the first first time since the freeze. Squinting from the light, he looks out the window, seeing the frozen wasteland that was once a bustling city. Lead brakeman Roche greets him and offers him tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich, which he happily eats as it's the first real food he's had in years. As he does, Roche reveals that they know Leighton used to be a homicide detective and there's been a murder on the train. Since most brakemen were Wilford security guards and athletes, none of them have detective skills like him. Afterward, they take him to see the body that's cut up and hidden under the floor. The victim was Sean Wise, a third-class passenger who worked in agriculture. However, Leighton refuses to help and wants to return to the tail. Brakeman Till and Osweiler stop him, but Leighton insists on not betraying his people. Because of this, Osweiler pushes Leighton into a cell and beats him. Roche and Melanie stop him and order the Brakeman to leave. With that, Melanie introduces herself to Leighton. She tells him that Mr. Wilford wants the case solved immediately, so they'll open all doors for him to investigate it. Roche adds that there was a similar murder two years ago, and someone is already serving time for it. This means they have a copycat, or they got the wrong person. Leighton negotiates to get rations and third-class immigration for the tailies in exchange for his services. However, Roche argues that tailies boarded the train like rats while everyone had either tickets or jobs. Melanie asserts that he's the only homicide detective on board, so Mr. Wilford asks him to contribute. She takes him to the medical carriage to show a woman stated inside the drawers, Nikki Ganey, who was the suspect in the previous murder. Since Nikki is the only witness to the first murder, they intend to wake her. Melanie offers to make Leighton the train detective and move into third class if he solves the case. Still, Leighton refuses, so Melanie asks Roche to let him meet the suspects. At the third class car, Roche takes Leighton to meet Sean Weiss's roommates, which includes his ex-wife, Zara, whom he hasn't seen in five years. Alone, Leighton scolds Zara for telling the brakeman that he was a detective. She insists that someone she loved was murdered, and she's giving Leighton a chance to escape the tale. However, he points out that he didn't choose it, unlike what she did when she joined the night car. Tearfully, Zara reminds him that he forced her to 
to board the Snowpiercer when she wanted to die with her family. He got them stuck in the tail, so she insists that he can't judge her for her choices. Afterward, Roche takes Slate into the agriculture car, where he sees plants for the first time since the freeze. Melanie joins them and Leighton accuses her of thinking he'd do anything after they show him his ex and some food. He stresses that they need the case solved to keep their peace, so he demands to get Tailies the rights and rations equal to third class passengers. However, Melanie points out that every fruit on the train represents a limited number of calories for the passengers. Given this, she argues that Leighton needs every fruit there more than the train needs him. Later, the Tailies celebrate Evan's birthday. His birthday wish is to be alone for one hour with his music. The others respect this and Evan uses this time to mourn his wife. Minutes later, the Tailies discover that Evan has hung himself. In the aquarium car, Melanie tells Jinju that Nikki is being awakened. This makes Jinju worry but Melanie asks her to watch over the girl, promising that their other work will continue once the case is solved. Meanwhile, Evan's death fuels the Tailies' anger, so Pike plots the beginning of their revolt. After a while, the Jackboots are called to take Evan's body. Till and Osweiler arrive to collect the body but they use this chance to start the riot. Osweiler escapes while Till gets taken. The Jackboots attempt to close the gates but the Tailies ram it, allowing Strongboy to pass through. More Jackboots arrive at the scene and they continue the fight. Strongboy severs one officer's hand and a little girl named Winnie takes it to unlock the gate. However, more Jackboots are waiting when she opens it. When Melanie arrives in the car before the tail, she stops Commander Gray from using Leighton as a hostage against the Tailies. Leighton insists that he can make his people stop and Melanie allows him. Gray gives Leighton only three minutes to convince the Tailies to stand down, otherwise they'll all be executed. With that, Leighton approaches Pike, z and Strongboy who's holding Till hostage. He explains that they recruited him to investigate a murder, but the others doubt him, thinking he's a traitor. Still, Leighton warns that they'll kill all of them if they don't stand down. Hearing this, z relents to protect his wife and kid. He then tells Leighton that Evan hung himself, which sparked their rebellion. Pushing down his grief, Leighton tells Pike that he has a plan to let them live. He then punches Till, knocking her out. With her unconscious, Leighton tells the three to surrender to the drawers. While Leighton investigates the murder, he can study the train, including their security detail and schedules, which they can take advantage of. Pike falls to his knees, crying as they've caused so much bloodshed and only made it to one car. He's giving up hope, but Leighton assures him that they'll eventually take the engine. Finally, Leighton tells Melanie that the three will surrender to the drawers and he agrees to solve the case. Melanie accepts but adds that Ruth will also dismember an arm to make an example. At the end of the day, Melanie returns to her quarters to de-stress. Afterward, she goes to the front of the train, where Ben gives her the driver's chair, calling her Mr. Wilford. The next day, Ruth chooses to dismember Winnie's arm to make an example. However, her mother, Suzanne, volunteers to take her place, noting that Winnie only helped in the rebellion because she failed as a mother. Impressed, Ruth agrees. Winnie runs to her mother's arms and the woman assures her daughter that she'll be okay. With that, Suzanne removes her jacket while Winnie holds on to her brother. The jackboots place a metal brace on Suzanne's right arm and douse it with water. After opening a window, they stick the frightened woman's arm out in the blizzard, freezing her limb as she screams. In one minute, Suzanne's arm is frozen enough that it's smashed into shards. During this, Pike, z and Strongboy are put under suspension in the drawers. Later, an avalanche crashes over the snowpiercer, causing turbulence but the train still keeps going. As she gets ready, Melanie stops to see an old picture of her baby. She goes to the head of the train, greeting engineers Ben and Javi. They report that their speed keeps triggering the avalanches, and Javi warns that he can't see their path clearly through the satellites anymore. He suggests reducing speed, but this will also reduce their electricity. Melanie refuses, given the sensitive situation amongst the passengers, so she orders them to maintain the speed. Meanwhile, few Tailies are recruited for sanitation duty. As Leighton follows Till to begin the investigation, he sees his fellow Tailies being shuffled to their work. In the first class car, the rich passengers are upset about the rebellion. Lila also mentions the murder and how they recruited a Tailie to investigate it. Melanie assures them that Leighton was a detective, but Lila offers her services to the investigation since she was a lawyer. However, LJ points out that her firm never handled murders. Despite this, Lila believes that the Freeze taught every survivor that they're capable of killing to survive. Melanie agrees, that's why everyone is a suspect, including her. In third class, Leighton talks to the man who found Sean's body, Carter. He recounts that he was doing a maintenance check when he saw the body. When Leighton asks about the security checks in that area, Till stops Carter from answering. At the medical car, Jinju watches over Nikki, who hasn't awakened yet. Dr. Henry Klimt assures Melanie that she'll slowly come out of the suspension and he'll figure out what's keeping Nikki under. Still, Jinju worries as she sees Nikki's arm infected by the suspension formula. Meanwhile, Till takes Leighton to the night car. He learns that the club's leader, Audrey, found Nikki with the first victim, 
who was her client. Nikki was disoriented, possibly due to using substances, but Mr. Wilford wanted a quick resolution, so she was detained. Leighton notices Zara beginning her shift there, so Audrey offers to let him see their services. Till refuses, but the other woman insists that he needs to understand what they do. With that, Leighton joins Zara in a private room. His ex-wife reveals that the night car isn't a brothel since people crave to grieve and connect with everything they've lost after the world ended. Guiding him, Zara tells him to close his eyes as they imagine how Earth was before. This makes Leighton recall their happy days and the day he proposed to her. Zara hesitated because she was worried about the world, so Leighton promised to take care of her. This convinced her to say yes. Rekindling their love, Leighton and Zara become intimate. Afterward, Zara reveals that there were rumors that Sean was a snitch. He won the baby lottery recently, which would have allowed them to have a child with her, but Zara was suspicious that he had contacts to get it. Leighton promises to ensure that Zara doesn't get pinned for the murder, but he insists that he also has a responsibility to the tale. She suggests that he can stay with her, but before Leighton can answer, Till tells him that time's up. Next, they check the body and deduce that Sean was choked before getting dismembered. His limbs were sawn off, but his member was cut with a blade, possibly a cleaver. Leighton points out that butchers would have both items. Till insists that they don't do cannibalism there, unlike the rumors about the tale. However, Leighton confirms that those weren't rumors. During the first year in the tale, a gang killed and ate anyone until the rest ambushed their leader. Everyone then ate a piece of his heart so no one could claim they were innocent. With this in mind, they head to the cattle car, but they're denied access without a notary. Meanwhile, Jinju and Klimt can't figure out why Nikki still won't wake up. As they face the idea that the suspensions are deadly, Melanie opens the rest of the car, revealing hundreds of drawers with more people inside. Suddenly, she notices an odd vibration as an avalanche threatens the train from outside. Javi and Ben discover that an entire slope of snow is falling in front of them. With no time to stop, the train crashes into the avalanche, causing several cars to shake violently. In the cattle car, a butcher hits his head on the window, causing a crack that soon explodes, introducing the snow inside. In seconds, the butchers and cattle freeze to death. Engineers are soon dispatched to investigate the damage while wearing protective suits. Till and Leighton use this opportunity to check the freezer, where the latter discovers a loose vent. While Till opens it, Leighton discreetly puts a metal wire in his pocket. Upon opening the vent, they find Sean's missing limbs. Meanwhile, breachman Boyan waits for the engineers, who are apparently Melanie and Ben. He comments how Melanie is supposed to be in hospitality, but Ben argues that Mr. Wilford wanted her to check things personally. To repair the damages, Melanie agrees to reduce the speed by 12%, so there will be rolling blackouts in the train. The blackouts begin at the tail, plunging everyone into darkness. During this, Osweiler uses Suzanne's son's services in exchange for medicine for his mother. However, he gives him a substance called Chronol instead of painkillers. Elsewhere, Jinju and Ben report to Melanie how the damage will limit their power and water supply. To maintain the peace with first class, Melanie plans to give third class limited supply while the tail will survive on their own. She insists on keeping how bad the damage is between them and proceeding with choosing an apprentice to bolster faith. Because of this, Ruth returns to the tail, momentarily switching the power back for her announcement. She chooses a few kids to be her apprentices, including Miles. The kids will move up the train to receive an education, so they say goodbye to their families. Meanwhile, Leighton realizes that if the butchers were only after the meat, they wouldn't have tortured Sean. Someone else must have killed and castrated him. Suddenly, a jackbooter passes by and insults Leighton, but Till shoves him and defends her companion. Leighton calms her down, but she insists on just blaming the butchers. However, Leighton refuses to do so unless they're sure. Hearing this, Till confesses that she was assigned to Nikki's case. Since people wanted it done quickly, she couldn't do anything to clear her name. Later in his cell, Leighton writes the train layouts that he discovered on a piece of fabric. He then uses the wire he stole to unlock his cell. As the tailies from sanitation are escorted back, Leighton attracts the jackboot's attention to let his comrades pick up the fabric. This leads him to get beaten up. In the tale, Miles says goodbye to Josie, whom he sees as his tale mom. He chooses to accept the apprenticeship and become a mole for them. Josie promises that they'll never start fighting, but Miles going up the train might mean they'll never see each other again. Miles is sure that they will after the revolution. The kids hug their families one last time before moving up. After the rest leave, the power is cut off from the tail. In a cell, Melanie and Roche confront a wounded Leighton. Melanie points out that 3,000 souls are surviving on a planet that's frozen all life. Their survival is thanks to the order maintained by Mr. Wilford. Leighton hints that this is why Wilford needed informants like Sean Wise, who was paid in perks like the baby lottery. He believes that they care about the murder since they need to know what secret Sean spilled when he was tortured. Melanie doesn't deny this but warns that Leighton is only alive because he's the only one who can solve the murder in Snowpiercer, whose peace and integrity are at risk. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.